Alright guys, this is Budget EDC -er here, and I'm going to be going over my EDC in this video. Now I'm sure you know, if you're a part of the knife gear community, EDC means everyday carry. These are the items that I carry every day. I'm going to start with my tools and stuff, and move to the less, less interesting stuff, so if you just want to watch the first part of the video, you can. It's probably going to be a fairly short video. Alright, the first thing I usually carry, I'm going to say about five days out of the week, I carry my Leatherman PST. This has been reviewed. I don't know if the video's up yet. I don't know what order these are going to be going up in because I've got like five videos exporting and processing right now. But this stays on my belt in its sheath. And riding beside it is this... Victorinox uh, su Super Tinker that I've put a lanyard on just so I can get it out of the sheath easier. I am an overweight person, so it's more difficult to get things out of sheaths than it is for most people, so a lanyard makes it fairly helpful. Uh, my main blade right now, or just because I haven't changed it since I was using these for testing for the uh, review, is my Buck 373 Trio, and this Buck 379 Solo rides in the breast pocket of my jacket. I like to keep a smaller knife in there just for loaning out something that if I just have to use in a task that I know is not going to be good for one of my more expensive knives, I'll just throw this one in there, and I'm not going to worry about it breaking, worry about it getting lost, etc. Now to some people this may look like a lot of stuff maybe some stuff that can be eliminated, some redundancies here. But let's get this one out of the picture, because this just rides in my jacket. It's not an everyday use item, but it is carried every day in my jacket. So let's look at these items for a second. I have a multi-tool, a Swiss Army knife, which is arguably a multi-tool. I actually have that in the wrong slot from where I put it in there in the video. Wish I would have noticed that, but whatever. And I also have a Buck 373 Trio, which is a medium stockman. Uh, sure, both of these have blades. But, I really don't like having to go through all the work of getting the main blade out on this. And, I just like having more than one knife on me. Period. This knife never gets used. Hardly ever does it ever even get pulled out of the side of it where it is and usually that's just by accident because I was reaching for the file so this is just used for whatever tools are on it so let's get that out of the picture and we're just gonna work with what knives I carry uh, this is what I use most of the time actually I'm either using the large main blade or the small pin blade which is right there uh, I'm not actually going to open them up if you want to see those. I have a review of this up on my channel. Or if it's not up yet, it'll be up sometime in the next couple of days. This is really my secondary knife. This floats around in my watch pocket. If not my watch pocket, just the bottom of my right pocket. Uh, something this knife's really good for is if you're around older people, maybe granddad, older family members that grew up, with traditional knives, they can appreciate something like this. If you break out your Kershaw Blur or something, that's not going to look like a quality knife to them. I'm not saying it's not, but to the older community, when those knives came out, they were cheap, they were flashy, and they were gimmicky and weren't worth the money. And older people stick with the ideas they have, and that's just how older people are. So, if you're using a knife around somebody like that. Having something like this will get you some credit with them. They might strike up a conversation with you about knives, and I don't know a more pleasant thing to talk about, honestly. So, this is a very good secondary blade. I like pairing modern knives with traditional knives. Although, my EDC right now, this can be considered a traditional knife, so I'm just rolling all traditional right now. And the Leatherman PST, this came out in like, I think late or early 90s late 80s so just about everything here is fairly traditional uh, moving away from the interesting items and on to the monotonous stuff that you're probably not going to care about so if that's all you wanted you can stop the video now I carry well no 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 there's still more gear my bad this is either in my 
left watch pocket if I've used it that day. And that if this is my left watch pocket, it means this is it. Or right watch pocket. I really don't know my left from my right, you guys. If this is in my right watch pocket, then this is just floating around my right pocket at the bottom. If this isn't in my watch pocket, this is in the breast pocket of my jacket with the Buck Solo. I do not recommend using the carbide or ceramic sharpener teeth. This is the only part I use. It says serrated ceramic, but if you can get the edge right or the angle correct on this, you can sharpen any knife you have and it works fine. It's the best sharpener you can get for the money. If you've ever seen the trick where you sharpen a knife on the bottom part of a ceramic coffee mug, it's the exact same thing. And if you haven't heard about that, shoot me a message and I'll show you how to do that in the video. It's very, very effective. It's very, very inexpensive because you don't actually have to buy anything in most cases because most people have a ceramic coffee mug somewhere. You're not going to hurt the mug. You're not going to hurt your knife if you're careful. And... Some people find, or actually everybody finds, it works better than carbide teeth and the ceramic teeth too because these take off way too much metal. I'd be willing to bet if you weighed a knife before you used one of those two that you're going to be able to tell the difference. On bottom, there's this rod that I use for sharpening serrations. It's fairly useful. It's hard to get out, hard to put back in. Don't want to dig around in there. But this is a good system for somebody that's into budget gear like my name says budget EDC -er. this is a very good item to have maybe even carry on you if you're a weirdo like me but now I'm fairly sure that's all the gear related stuff yeah it is alright I've got just a standard leather trifold I've got my license turned around for obvious reasons you can see that I live in Georgia though something interesting that probably no one's gonna care about this says genuine American bison leather. This is the nicest wallet I've ever had, and it cost me like 40 bucks. I hate when that happens because you'll go in to buy a wallet, and then when you finally get that awesome wallet, it's empty because you just spent all your money. Uh, that imprint right there that you see is a Bear Grylls Priorities of Survival manual, and that's the, honestly the most useful thing that came with my Bear Grylls multi tool. Uh, but other than that, it's just a standard wallet. You can see I'm fairly broke right now. And by fairly, I mean there's no money in here. I actually took that out before the video to show you this, though. Uh, it's got two spots. I usually keep ones in here for the vending machines at school. Grab a bottle of water or something. Five, tens, and twenties in here. I never have $100 bills. I'm, I'm a broke high school student, so if there's any more of y'all out there, you know how it is. Some of you guys might be thinking you're in high school you're carrying knives, what's going on with that? Where you are, that may be an issue for your schools, but there's no gang activity where I am. There's never been any violence that happened like that at my school, so it's usually not an issue up there. We have an agriculture program, a shop class, a construction class, and he advocates the use of multi-tools. He advocates you bringing them in, so it's just a different world here than it might be other places. So next, even more monotonous, nobody's going to care about it. Eh, you might care about the lighter, I don't know. Um, got a pack of gum. If you remember high school very well, or if you're in it right now, this is as good as money. It's, and it passes the time quite well. It's just something, it gives you something to do while you're in, sitting in class bored to death. I like chewing gum, so I'm always going to have a pack of it on me. And it's usually ID by stride. I've got a couple packs of it sitting around on my desk. Uh, standard Bic lighter. I like the white ones because you can see where the fluid is. I don't know if you can see that because of the lighting. Uh, that actually made it worse. Yeah, you can see it, I think, looking through the viewfinder. Uh, don't smoke anymore. Used to have it just carried over from carrying a lighter, and it's very, very useful. Most gear guys carry lighters regardless. Uh... May or may not have said this already because I've already recorded this video a couple times and it didn't go so well. This is my Papermate Ink Joy. The Ink Joy is actually a line of pens from Papermate, and I don't remember which one specifically this one is. But this is the best pen, to, pen I've ever used. It's the best one I've ever had, and this is all I'm going to buy from now on. But the first pack I bought 
there's noted quality decline in the second pack I bought just with the clicking and everything else really good pins four for about two dollars and fifty cents The last thing I got is the least interesting just got some Apple iPhone uh, earphones these aren't the five as I said broke high school student these go to my four uh, I would show you my four but it's what I'm using to film right now because I don't have a decent camera that does video so that's my EDC and this is budget EDCer signing off thanks for watching